Hi everybody again, it's been a while. This is the year 2020 and my first tutorial of the year. This is part 6, Maya Expressions, where I'll talk about noise and using that to help with our animation. Before I begin, this is the time in our history where we are faced with a pandemic, the coronavirus. Uh, I hope you and your family are safe and um, most of the countries in the world I think are advising people to stay at home. So um, if you're staying at home and you want to find out a bit more about um, making organic animation with Maya using the noise function, stay with me and we'll take the journey, okay? If you've been following Expressions 5, we talked about random values. Random values are discrete because they are discrete, they are not continuous. It means that uh, for every input value you change, the output value changes considerably. That means that uh, you get very jittery, jumpy, disconnected, discontinuous, incoherent uh, results. So this, most of the time for animation, this is not what we want. Today we're going to look at um, continuous values. Before I go on, uh, let me give you the big overview. Uh, there are a few ways to generate seemingly uh, organic, uh, unpredictable kind of animation. So the first one you have noise. Okay, which is a mail command. Later on uh, in the next few sections, we'll go through other techniques. So that noise is the most convenient one. Later on, you have sine, you have cosine. Most of the animation packages that you will encounter will have these very fundamental sine, cosine uh, functions that you can call upon. That will also give you another technique to generate your animation curves. But today we're gonna look at the noise function, which is Maya's solution to seemingly random values but continuous and coherent without saying anything more let's go create our my favorite cube we're gonna drive the translate y and then we already have cube 4 translate y at targeted so I'm gonna copy and equals to noise okay so let's just do noise noise is a function uh, that has brackets where we can give it arguments uh, inputs so that it can do its job okay so uh, create it gives us an error it tells us that it needs an argument okay so it it, it requires at least one so let's go and take a look at uh, what noise requires so how I got to this was um, you go to your search bar uh, Maya mail and then you get Maya commands okay so these are all the commands that are available to you in Mel. In the subsequent tutorial, I wish to make use of more of these to illustrate different techniques. So today's is noise. So as you're typing it, you can see that it's suggesting N-O-I-S. So that's quite a reactive page for you. This is the Maya's official documentation. After a while, when you work with these, you will realize that there is a format that helps you. Uh, understanding the format is, will be quite useful. This is a synopsis, it's a simple thing uh, that says that it returns a value of a noise field uh, in one, two, three dimensions. So one dimension is a single value, two dimensions is uh, like a x, y, uh, the three dimensions is x, x, y, z, which can be a position in space. So it needs the noise keyword, which we already have. The second thing it, it needs is, uh, it needs one value at least. So let's, let's give it like a hundred, okay, add it. If we go a hundred and ten, or and 10 so it gives you another value right it looks like it's also disjointed and incoherent right that's because from 100 I jump to 110 so if I do 101 it's here which is 0 0.48 102 it seems to jump a lot 103 but you can see that it's jumped from here to a middle position and then to a bottom position this is kind of an animation right 104 and it jumps back up again so the way to see this is to drive this noise function with frame number okay frame so what happens is when you go through the animation the frame steadily increases let's see what kind of animation this noise function gives us so and then let's play it okay this almost looks like the same thing as the last tutorial where uh, you got lots and lots of different uh, values and it's jumping about right and we can take a look at the curve almost looks like that uh, from the random values but if I stretch it out if I make my time pass slower 0 0.1 so that's 10 times in frame 1 we're gonna give to noise 0 0.1 at frame 2 Maya will give to the noise function 0 0.2 frame 3 
it will give the noise function 0 0.3 so it's kind of we're slowing down time okay and you can see now we slow down time the seemingly disjointed value that was jumping around now we can actually see it stretched out scaled up in the x-axis and now when we play the values are no longer jumping around they're actually going from one value to the next and in a smooth manner because we slowed it down so as it is playing I'm going to do a 0 0.5 okay so we multiply by 0 0.5 update click edit and you can see um, it becomes more active but uh, in between from frame to frame it is still forming a trajectory right it going down and then two frames later it went up and then two frames it went down and up again so it still forms a coherent trajectory that makes sense uh, across time like we did from before we can slow it down to very very slow and it can keep the coherency and it and it looks organic doesn't it okay. so it looks like it's a simple thing right you give it an input uh, value so what we have is an expression here that evaluates and then Maya gives it to uh, the noise function from the form of this function we've really gone into the first way that we can control this it looks like we have no way to control you give it a value and it gives you something but when we did a frame number times a multiplier we slowed it down if we times two instead we speed it up all those values pass by our timeline at twice the speed now that's one way we can control how fast that noise evolves over time what is the other way that we can control it so there are only two things that we need to control from the function it's uh, the speed which time passes the second one is actually how far it is moving okay so by the way what I'm doing here is the alternate middle mouse drag right same thing when you want to pan your viewpoint alternate middle mouse okay the next thing is uh, alternate by mouse you zoom it but we can lock our direction of dragging by alternate shift and middle mouse if you start dragging left you lock your direction to just horizontally right so alternate shift and click and then you go up you lock your direction of drag to the vertical axis now alternate right mouse you zoom and you you bring the graph closer but we can also do a alternate shift right mouse button and then when I do up down motion so I locked my zooming on the vertical axis so I'm not changing the value I'm just changing how I'm viewing the values because sometimes the, va the, the, the values are sort of kind of very small and uh, we don't get a good view of that but similarly we can also uh, scale the horizontal axis so alternate shift uh, right click drag left and right and then, then your your zoom will be locked to the horizontal axis uh, a lot of time Maya doesn't give us exactly the the zoom level we, we want to be looking at so uh, it's good to have these one more reminder if you're not seeing your graph in the graph editor it's because we're using a, an expression to generate these curves so if you can't see it go to view and uh, show results so uh, by default we don't we won't see the results it only shows keyframes if we key it these are not keyframes these are results of functions so what we want to do is go to view and uh, show results so it's showing us and graphing out the position of y for every frame and thus we see a curve uh, with no keyframes back to our first way we can control the time where the noise plays out second thing is we want to find out what kind of value this noise gives us right so I'm going to one of the peaks uh, it tells me it's uh, 0 0.759 let's go to the next peak 0 0.809 0 0.994 okay let's find what is the lowest value that this gives us 0 0.996 so then uh, if I condense this graph none of the values goes above 1.0 and negative 1.0 that is kind of a convention for I think most 3D packages when you have noise when you have sine cosine uh, it always gives you a normalized result it falls between negative one and positive one and it's centered along the zero value you can call it oscillating uh, when you're talking about sine wave and cosine waves but uh, this one is going to and from 
negative 1 and positive 1. What happens when, for example, I have a larger cube and we want our original uh, cube with noise to be fluctuating around the surface of this cube being at the center plus one minus one so you know that I, I scaled it up by 4.459 which is an arbitrary number it's not a whole number it's not pretty we want to find out how high this surface now is lying on so um, one of my favorite tricks is to create a locator and snap it to the point if you don't know how to step to a point uh, what you need to do is uh, click on this you can drag and you can see it goes nowhere else uh, except to the vertices of things inside your viewport now I can read off the values 2.229 right so how do we make um, our box which is now centered at 0 in the horizontal axis in Y to fluctuate at that height you take that 2.29 and then you go here, uh, translate y, that's where our noise is. At the end of that, do a plus 2.229. Edit. So what, what happens? The whole result, that whole graph, is being shifted, transposed, or translated upwards by 2.229 units, which then gives us that same noise behavior centered around that new height from the locator okay so that's the other way that we can influence whatever comes out of the noise right now we come to the third possibility what happens if I want this guy to look like it's sort of vibrating on the surface now this guy is fluctuating too far away from that surface from an animation perspective we can't really tell that oh it has a relationship with, with that surface what we want to do now is to reduce the magnitude of this function. The magnitude is the amount that range from originally plus 1 and minus 1 is the magnitude of, the, of this function. Can you take a guess uh, what we should do to reduce it? So we're dealing with kind of mathematics, right? So, so this noise is a, is a black box. It's a mystery to us, but it gives us this behavior. Uh, for now let's not care about that but it gives us a value and the value keeps going between plus one and minus one and then we push it up right so anything with that we do here is we did we it's going to evaluate and then this thing transpose it up to where we want it to so uh, if we want to minimize it all we need to do is do a multiply 0.5 i'm going to cut okay control control x um, okay and, and edit it later we're gonna paste it back now I'm going to drag it along the timeline and take a look at um, the value 0 .0, 0 0.49 and you let's see some negative numbers 0 0.4849 negative and then it doesn't go above negative 5 and positive 5 anymore right that's because we halved it everything gets halved maybe we just multiply it by 0 0.15 and now it's not jumping up and down so much so we reduce the magnitude of that function 0 0.05 why don't we so edit uh, so you can see it do its thing but at a reduced dynamic range right then I'm gonna paste back plus 2.5 29 so so now um, we get this thing almost looks like floating on that surface that we set up if you want it to be more frantic all you need to do is multiply the time the passage of time by 1.2 it's now sort of vibrating okay three times and update that is how you control a simple noise there's one more thing I come to realize that the noise function it looks like uh, it's looking up a graph what happens is first frame for example my shot starts in first frame it's in this position okay then uh, okay let's let's go down back to 0 0.2 okay so for example I want to direct my curve so from frame 1 it goes up and then it goes down right so 
so the initial direction when I when my shot starts it's going up and then it goes down so what happens if I want it to be heading downwards and then going up I'm sure you know what I mean right so this is the kind of control that uh, we don't have that kind of control because well that's what noise gives me when my shot starts at uh, frame one uh, it goes up and then it goes down we have control don't panic so maybe you like this big dip going down that's where I'm gonna start my shot like at frame 35 it would be perfect if we start the shot and it takes a big dip and then it and, and then it goes up again okay so if you like that the last thing that we can control this noise by is uh, frame plus an offset at frame 1 we wish it were 35 so what happens is when we are at frame 1 we plus 35 but that's not going to work because in the priority in the sequence of operation that goes first and then it gets added to frame so what we need to do is uh, to put a bracket because parentheses will have priority in evaluation watch what happens before we update this find something that you recognize this little notch and then drop down big up and big downwards so let's do a update so you can see that same thing that notch and then the down then big upwards and big downwards swoop let me undo redo undo and redo you can see that the whole curve uh, that noise curve has been pushed backwards by us adding 35 to the frame that means you can start anytime you like this is all I have to show you for the noise function throughout this video we built the noise function from a very simple thing to something that you might be intimidated by to break it down and abstract it this is a um, frame let's name this so plus offset the, the value that you want to shift your frame forward or backwards by and this one times so we can call this time multiplier okay or you can call it the speed uh, okay speed probably okay and then you times so what, what was this this was the magnitude right so magnitude when you multiply anything by one you get its own original negative one to positive one it's only when you uh, increase or decrease you kind of reduce the magnitude and you increase the magnitude and then plus this finally this this last thing is the offset right the to offset your whole curve bring it up in 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 position bring it down to the value that you were uh, expecting so that's the uh, I don't know what to name this uh, offset okay value offset I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed I'll leave a command if you found it helpful or, or thought of some new way to use it I'll be very glad to hear whatever you're doing with it Okay guys, see you next time, stay safe and don't go out if there's no need. Goodbye.